Hey, real estate agents, it's Jeff Underwood, host of the Weekly Closer, along with my co-host, Joey Sampaga. How's it going, Joey? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing fine. Yeah? Yeah. We've got an exciting guest with us today, all the way from Florida. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Pinky. <laughs> that was a long flight, Pinky. I'm telling you. No. You're so Pinky awesome. Is, she is awesome. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks for so having got, me. Yeah. Sue Pinky Benson with Remax out in Naples is joining the Weekly Closer today. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. How are you doing? I mean, I see that you you must be doing awesome. Gosh, you got a lot of pink in the background there and everything's going on. Palm <laughs> trees know, and sunshine. You, you got to be consistent with the pink. You know, if you're going to wear it, you can't just wear it one day a week. You got to wear it all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think I even remember seeing you post something about a car. Yes, I have a pink beetle. Yep. Uh, 2017, one of 300 in the country. I'll have, you know, it's a convertible. It's super cute. It has like a Burberry print inside. That is nice. cool. I don't know if I would look good. Joey, would I look good in a pink I beetle? Think you I don't would. know about that. Convertible. With the convertible yeah, down. <laughs> yeah, so as long as I wear my beanie with the mask, I think I'm good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Pinky, let's let's jump into this. I want the uh, the listeners to know how long you've been in real estate. And also, I'm intrigued by the fact that you've made a move to a different place. So, essentially essentially starting over, starting from scratch, I would say, uh, yeah. in a completely different market. So sh share a little bit about that. Uh, well, let's see. I've been in real estate nearly a decade. I think it was like nine years is what I'm going up on. Um, so I was north of Tampa, which is probably about three hours from where I currently am. So it's not like I'm working in the same neck of the woods even. Completely different market. Okay. Uh, went from a place that was a small town, 400 agents, to a place that has 6,000 agents. Not that they're all active, mind you, but they hang their license and pretend like they are. Um, and so you know, everybody it's, and, knows an agent. Is that what I'm hearing? Everybody, yeah. <laughs> like even at my own dinner table, somebody knows an agent. <laughs> yeah. Me, so. uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of crazy. We kind of have um, that here. I think we're at 40,000. Yeah, Phoenix? we're at 40,000. Like <laughs> It, it, yeah. it is crazy. And, you know, I went from a place where like the median price range of a three bedroom home was about 120 to a place where it's like 400,000. So, you know, major adjustments in, in multiple communities versus like, you know, my old home, like I had like five gated communities here. I can't like literally spit without hitting one. So it's everywhere. <laughs> uh, so do you do that thing where you have to just wait behind a car that goes in and then you just make your way in? To yeah, these no, gated communities to check those, those gates are fast. They're fast. <laughs> See, here they're, pr they're pretty slow around here. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but I, I really like what you're doing. I, I'm following you on Facebook a lot, and you're doing uh, some pretty cool stuff with not only your personal page, but your business page. A lot of it has to do with video and live streaming, correct? That would be correct. Yep. I'm a big video hog, I might say. I'm sure I annoy <laughs> people out there. Um, but, you know, my background, I actually have a degree in broadcast journalism um, from Florida Southern College. Got to give my props out there. Yeah. And uh, that said, you know, I obviously have always liked the camera and it's just been kind of a natural transition for me as uh, you know, we've evolved on Facebook from, you know, our regular old just putting up a text to pictures of dinner. So now we're live at the dinner table. So we've come a long right. way. Yeah, absolutely. We have. So you've only been a couple of years now, not even two years yet, right? In no, Naples? Not even two years. It'll be two years in August that I moved to Naples. And okay. technically, I didn't hang my real estate license here until January. So it was just a year in January that I started actively working Naples okay. as a real estate. A year now. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it's been quite the transition and you know, a lot of agents out there, you know, whether they're getting into it first time or they're starting over, it is overwhelming and it's a lot of volunteer work. You're in, what I mean is that you're not getting paid and you're putting out a lot of effort and you're like, when is my payday going to come? And, and it can be very discouraging. I mean, I've had like a lot of downtime, you know, during the last year and a half to be like, what am I doing? Is this ever going to work? You know, and <laughs> just gotta hang in there. <laughs> well, a lot of experts say that it takes a while, right? I mean, you're doing uh, something like uh, Gary, Gary V talks a lot about being that yeah, person absolutely. known in your area, right? And it takes some time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm a dedicated follower of Mr. V. <laughs> um, but he's like 24 to 30 months. If you listen to Tony Robbins, same thing. They'll tell you anytime that you're starting a business, you got to have two years to 30 months. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely a long-term dedication. You know, I mean, I think so many times we just think we're going to get our real estate license and a buyer's going to walk in the door and then a seller's going to knock on the door and we're going to be set for the rest of our career. And, you know, that's not how it works, especially if you're in it for the long haul. You have got to put in time, dedication, and a lot of volunteer time to get that off the ground. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Totally agree. What about the, um, so in Naples, in, in the Naples area there, you are... You're using a lot of live video, a lot of Facebook Live to really highlight the community. Tell us a oh, little. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the community itself. I, I've never been to Naples. I've I think I've maybe maybe Come driven through Tampa. It, <laughs> it looks nice. I mean, I remember the first time I saw you doing Facebook Live. I, I think it was one of the first ones I saw. It was a while while back. Um, you were I think you were on the beach. You were walking on the beach, and I think you were asking the people that were watching um, for. Uh, gosh, what was it? Some ideas, I guess, that you could share uh, oh, like using Facebook Live. Yeah, I think you were saying, hey, any idea, anything you would like for me to cover around the Naples area? I think I threw out a bunch of stuff like, I don't know, go kayaking. I, I think I said use the GoPro and you like do some yes, uh, parasailing and all kinds of stuff, whatever, right? You saw my video where I was in a kayak and a paddle board. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're definitely doing some of those things. But how is that? Are you starting to reap some of the, not rewards yet necessarily, but are you starting to see that people are getting to know who you are? Yeah, they know the brand. They know the brand. I mean, it, you know, I can go to events and when I introduce myself, I do introduce myself as Pinky. I'll say I'm Sue Pinky Benson and they'll be like, oh, Pinky. Then I'm like, yeah, Pinky knows Naples and that you can see the like, oh, you know, the recognition come across them. Um, so it's definitely worked. And, you know, and that was the thing is that when I first started Pinky Knows Naples, um, it was just, you know, it was Instagram and it was Facebook and it was just the very basics of like, you know, I'm on my beach walk in the morning. I'm taking a picture highlighting, you know, the beautiful beach. People love those pictures. So they yeah. always do really <laughs> well. And, and they're visual, you know, they're, you just embrace your community instantaneously. Then I wanted to learn about my community. So, you know, as a new agent in the area, I needed to get out and get to know it. So I started, I literally like, I, I walked down fifth Avenue, which is our downtown area, third street, which is also our historic area. And I've literally had my phone out in front of me, you know, talking to myself. People probably <laughs> thought I was a lunatic, but here I'm doing these Facebook lives and, you know, and I'm talking to people and, and I'm not interviewing anybody. So it's not even just like, I'm now at the point where I do interview other people and I bring them onto the show and I have it kind of lined up like you do. Um, yeah. but in the beginning, that's not what I was doing. But in the beginning I was researching, you know, facts, you know, wherever I was going and I was giving out tidbits of information and, you know, and then it evolved to me interviewing businesses. And I mean, that's really where it started to take off was once you start embracing your community, they embrace you back and, right. you know, and they want to share your stuff. And, you know, I, I've seen a lot of realtors going that route, which I'm really encouraged by because we do have a lot out there to offer. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, they get too stiff about it, you know, and they're like, yes, I'm here with the local Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Isn't he lovely? And it's like, you know, you guys know them on a personal basis. It's, this is Facebook. And we've got to remember that it's not just, you know, we're here to give you the, the commercial. We're here to like tell you something fun that you can take away and be like, Hey, if I was going to buy a Mercedes, I'd go to that place, you know, right. so have fun with it. Yeah, you know, I know that um, when I was doing that same thing, interviewing uh, businesses, my first probably three to five of them, I was newscaster Joey all of a sudden. Hey, everyone, <laughs> this is Joey Sampaga. You know, I try to be the newscaster. I try to be um, professional looking. And then I realized, you know, what? people don't want to see that because if they did, they just watch TV. Right. Exactly. So um, if you're yourself, which you are, I, I've watched your videos. You're awesome. I love when you interviewed the mermaid, by the way. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, whenever we're doing these things, we definitely need to be ourselves. Now, Pinky, I do have a couple questions for you. Number one, did you have your brand prior to going uh, prior to going into real estate, like the Pink brand? Uh, and then number two, what made you decide to choose interviewing small businesses? 
Uh, well, on the pink front, <laughs> um, I did not have it previously. Like when I first got into real estate, I was with my partner, my fabulous Shauna, who is Shauna Sells Sunshine. Um, mm -hmm. And we were a team. And I was first starting out and she was showing me the ropes and we it was in the horrible economy. And I realized very quickly that there was a lot of Susans in real estate business and there was like five mm -hmm. in my office alone. So I wanted a way to embrace myself as, you know, like, okay, so if they call up and they don't know my name because buyers barely know their own names, like they may not remember <laughs> mine, um, you know, how could they identify me? And so Legally Blonde came into play. I really liked the way that movie came together and, you know, all the pink. And it just, it was just like, a, it was literally like a pink light bulb went off in my head. And I said, I, I'm just going to start wearing pink. And it just, nice. and then one of my clients started calling me the pink lady. And then it was the pink lady of real estate. And so when I came to Naples, it just kind of embraced, it shortened it down. Pinky knows Naples, made it simple. So it is not just like, hey, I'm here for real estate. I'm here for your community. And um, how it came to that, I started interviewing businesses. Uh, you know, my intentions were just to expand the brand. And I think that that's really what you always have to be doing is evolving yourself. And if, you know, because if you don't evolve, you dissolve. That's my big thing. And, like you that. know, it, it's just the businesses started, you know, it was just really casual. Like I'd be on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram's a great place to interact because it's not as busy. And you can say, hey, do you want to be on an episode of Pinky Nose Naples? And by then... I had already established myself as who I was. Like they could go online and see what I was talking to myself. So then they could, you know, oh, well, she could probably interview us. And then once I got a few under my belt and businesses recognized like, oh, well, she, you know, she's decent. She's not going to come on here and slam us. It's not some sort of weird, you know, propaganda piece. <laughs> and because I don't really get on there and go, hey, buy a house, buy a house. I just, yeah. you know. Say, hey, think pink, and if you need anything for your real estate needs, call me. You know. Sure. Sure. So, so um, you're you're saying that you use Instagram more than Facebook? Is that what I'm hearing? Or no, nope. I okay. I use Instagram, Snapchat, Insta Stories, Facebook. I I go all over the place, but. I will say that when you're looking to interact with businesses, for some reason, especially in my community, I tend to get more eyeballs on Instagram than on Facebook. I think Facebook's oh. very busy, so especially the bigger companies, they get tagged a lot in posts, you know, whereas Instagram, you're not getting tagged as much, you know, so there's a little bit more of a quiet, like, you know, and you can, you can show a business really easy by taking a picture or a quick video and putting it on face or on Instagram mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, they're paying attention to you as much as you are paying attention to them. Makes sense. Wow. All right. Good stuff. You know, you were talking about walking on the beach and I, I, I remember uh, reading a story about uh, a lady down in Hawaii and this was when video first started coming out and you hear, you hear about people start calling it a vlog instead of a blog, right? It's a video blog, right. so they call it a vlog. Right. <clears throat> and there were these things called vloggy awards. <laughs> and I remember reading this story about this lady in Hawaii who won like multiple years in a row for these vloggy awards. Vloggy and awards. I believe, and, and don't quote me on this, but I believe she was some type of psychologist or life coach or something. Oh, nice. And what okay. she would do is she would walk on the beach with her dog. And so you could hear the waves, you know, and everything, right? So it was soothing. Her husband would carry the camera and walk backwards um, huh. to record her episodes. But that's what she did. And so I, when you said that, I'm picturing, huh, you know how soothing it is for people? You know, they're trying, everybody's trying to escape the nine to five rat race, right? Or the eight to six or whatever it ends up being, especially in New York and Chicago and all the cold places. And then here you are on the beach, you know, with, with white sand and mm. palm trees and talking to mermaids and people <laughs> just are like, oh, man. There she is again. That's C. Shelley, the mermaid. You can follow can her on that. Facebook. Okay. C. Shelley, is that what it is? Shelley, yep. Uh, yeah, that's there funny. you go. All right. Yeah, I can see you doing the very same thing, right? I mean, everybody really, really loves the beach, I think. so. Uh, well, I think I so, but I think every community has something. And you talk about mermaids. Here's what's funny. The old uh, neighborhood that I used to work or the old town that I lived in is actually Wikiwachi. And Wikiwachi is home of the live mermaids. It's one of the very first amusement parks in Florida. So, okay. you know, right there, you have something you can embrace in your town. Um, you know, and every town has something. And that's what you just, you have to like, Take yourself, take a step back and look and be like, okay, 
what is it that my town has that people might embrace? Because if you're in snow, I might crave going skiing. You never know what your audience yeah. wants. And right. you just have to be that person. You got to be, you know, very aware of content that's going around on you every day and embracing right. that and just being like, oh, yeah, but, you know, vlogging's huge and it, it has taken off majorly. And, you know, I actually. I have a very private Instagram page and I encourage a lot of people that are just getting into video to look into setting up a private Instagram page because it's a great way to make yourself do videos every day and nobody else has to see them. But That's what I notice, even with my comfort, as comfortable as I am in front of the camera, I noticed that when I started vlogging on, I have a very personal subject. I'm, I'm sure you're aware. I lost my son about two years ago. And I wanted a place where I could articulate what I was feeling, but I didn't want to be, you know, judged by the rest of the world. And so I have, you know, very close friends and family members who follow me on that page. But when I started doing that and it was like a diary to me and I was really, I'm really just doing it for my own accountability so that maybe years from now I can go back and digest what I've been through. And, um, it made me more articulate in the way that I used Instagram for my work as well and, and embracing my community. So that's why I say make yourself an Instagram page. You get like what, 60 seconds to do a video. And if you're just practicing, nobody else is judging you and it's going to make right. you more comfortable in front of the camera. And you'll find that you're like, Oh wow. I, suddenly I'm a whole lot better than I used to be. <laughs> yeah. That's true. The yeah. more you do it, the better you get. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sorry, yeah. by the way, too. I... Oh, thank you. Um, so Instagram, private Instagram, that's a great idea. Yeah. I, I like the uh, video diary idea. Yeah. That's a good we idea. We try to tell people when we teach them classes. Oh, go ahead. No, you know, a lot of people, you know, they'll say like, oh, I don't have any content. I don't have any content. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, if you just sit down and you make yourself do it once a day, you'll start to realize that you look for the content. And once you start looking for the content, then your na next natural thing to do is to share it. Like one of my girlfriends, she would love for me to share. She's in the news business and she would love for me to share my grief content. But I'm not at that point yet where I'm comfortable to put that side of me out there. Um, so, you know, but what I'm saying is that there, once you start doing it, you'll realize that like it, it's like a light bulb goes off in your head and you're like, oh, you know, I could do this the next time I go out or I could, you know, and you get over the fear for some reason, people, my husband being one of them, he gets so scared when the, the phone is like right here. And I'm like, why? <laughs> like, who cares? I'm like, I'm on this thing all day long. So what does it matter whether it's here or up there or down there or, you know? So. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, and you, and you hit on another one. I, I think that also, and you probably heard Gary Vee talk about this, where instead of worrying about creating content, Start Document. documenting all the things around you and what you do on a regular basis. And you'll because start getting used to the camera. How many times do realtors, like I've seen all the little funny things that they put up, those little comic strips or whatever you want to call them. They're mm -hmm. like, realtors, they don't know what we do all day. You know, they just think that we put a sign in the yard. Well, shoot, start blogging yourself, show them what you're doing. And, you know, I mean, I could be off going to a pinky nose Naples. I did a vlog last week. Where I was off, I was getting ready to go do a Pinky Nose Naples on, you know, some foodie event that was going on. And of mm. course, that's the moment that I get the call to go for a showing. Isn't wow. that how it always happens? <laughs> well, I had to go and turn the lights on. So quickly, I jump in the Pink Beetle. I'm doing my vlog. I run over there. And then while I'm doing the vlog, I'm showing them like, yeah, I'm on my way to do Pinky Nose Naples. But I had to stop by and turn the lights on and open the doors. And you know what? There's your tip, trick, and technique for getting your house sold quickly from Pinky because I know more than just real estate. or know more than Naples. I know real estate. So, you know, you can incorporate the two things. And people appreciate that because aren't we all being pulled in five different directions at any given moment? Yes. That's yes. right. So I like what you said. So what you are doing is you are, you're sharing Naples, you're sharing your community, your, your community and what you know about the community. And by the way, I happen to do real estate. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's like that, that annoying um, music underneath of, you know, that you always hear. And then finally, when the moment comes that you're like, Oh, I need a realtor, you know, Oh, they think pink. You know, it's just, it's the annoying music underneath of everything. And eventually I'm hoping that that's where it's going to. I mean, just this month I got my first two listings and actually I did, it was funny. Um, I called a videographer to do my professional video because it, 
at this point I've gotten, to, you know, when I was in real estate in Tampa area, I was at the point where I had a videographer who would go out and shoot the videos for me because I just didn't have the time to edit. Yeah. And uh, so I call him up and he wants $500 to do a 1,400 square foot three bedroom condo. Wow. I'm sure it would be a fabulous video. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> For $500, you better have all the bells and whistles. <laughs> but then I thought, you know what? Uh, the fabulous Michael Thorne taught me how to edit. And I'm like, I can do this. So I went out, shot everything on my iPhone, uh, had my tripod, my mic. And were there some things that I would have like changed? Oh, most definitely. Like, I mean, I cut off my head a little bit in a couple of places because I'm trying to make sure the mic reaches to the phone and, um, you know, and you can still see what I'm talking about behind me. But I put the whole thing together. Uh, it took me a couple of hours. Um, and I put it up on Facebook and it's gotten, I don't know, over 5,000 views within 72 hours of listing and putting it up on uh, Facebook. It's, um, it got its first offer and it's already under contract and it hasn't Excellent. even been a week. Wow. So wow. there were job. videos there, but you know, what was funny is I did put it up in one of those groups that we're in and, uh, yeah. you know, I said, let me know what you think. And some gentleman was like, well, you want me to be honest? I'll give you my honest opinion. And this goes back <laughs> to being who you are, you know, yeah. like, yeah. I was like your cartoon voice really bothers me. Wow. And, oh no. You know, and then he went on to say, like, you know, where I cutting off my head was very distract or cutting off the top of my head was very distracting. And, you know, and I, I said, thank you. I appreciate the honesty, you know, and I'm like the cartoon voice, the cartoon attitude. That's who I am. Yeah. So yeah. I can't change that, you know. So if you don't like it, then we probably wouldn't work well together, you know, but that's who I am. You know, now the cutting off of the head. Yeah, I'm working on that. And I appreciate that as constructive <laughs> criticism. But so you're going to hear that. I mean, there's always going to be haters. You're never going to get everybody. but embracing the video is going to change the way you do your business. I guarantee it. Yeah, no, we, we totally believe video is, is the way to go. I mean, even Facebook says that, right? That uh, the majority of Facebook will be video within the net. Well, it is now, but within the next couple of years, almost all of it will be. Well, you know, I, I do want to cut in here and uh, we, we do have a lot of listeners um, who go to our classes as well. And I want you to hear Pinky, what she's saying about video and what she's doing. She isn't afraid. She jumps on there. She, she, uh, continuously does it on a consistent basis. He practices, right, to, to um, perfect her craft, uh, not to the point of being like super professional, but being herself, okay? So I just wanted to relay this information with not, uh, not Jeff and I speaking, but someone who's using it in real estate and it's working for her in Naples, Florida, and you're crushing it. You're crushing it. Oh, hopefully. I, I hope to crush it someday. Please put that out there. <laughs> well, you're building, you're, you're building your brand. And, yeah. you know, as we were talking about this, I'm thinking uh, uh, we interviewed um, – actually, yeah, the podcast already came out. Uh, we interviewed a, uh, an agent here locally with Keller Williams, and she made a decision to do something. And that, one, that something was to, to go to every single Keller Williams event. Okay, so she went to, you know, the family reunion and the – What's other mega camp and all that stuff, right? And what she did was she went to all these events, and all she would do is meet other agents from other parts of the country. And then she built this referral network, yep. and she told us here in Phoenix, 90% of her business comes from referrals from other agents. And the Else? majority of that is outside of the state. Yeah. And so I'm not. picturing you going to all the Remax events. And I mean, just think about it. Pinky knows Naples. I mean, think about the referral network you could build um, from people in Chicago. I mean, I know you're already good friends with Sonia uh, up in Chicago. So I'm sure if she knew somebody that was wanting to bail the cold weather and head down south, uh, she'd be on the phone with you in a hurry. I do have a very good referral referral base and I'm very blessed for that and you know it's also because as you know Katie Lance will say in her books or her her social media guides it's that it's not a one-way street it's a two-way street and yeah. to build that referral like you can go and get the cards at convention but if you don't find them on Facebook or Instagram and then interact with them and talk to them and like them then you're just throw the card away because you're doing the, it's the whole thing all over again. You're not embracing it. You're just like, Oh yeah, I know somebody. Let me go dig into this pile of cards and see who I can find. Whereas right. if you said to me like right now, like who would I suggest in Cocoa beach, Florida? I'd say Eric Larkin. You know, sure. if you want to go over to Boca Raton, I know a bunch of agents over there that work that area as well. If you wanted to go to Chicago or, you know, up to Washington DC. 
And that's, that's what I think the value is really in is, you know, making sure that you have a strong referral base. Um, you know, it's extremely important. Definitely. Definitely. No, that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, gosh, what was I going to ask about the, uh, uh, I can't remember now. You know, you know, it, one of the things that I, with video that I also want, because so many people are scared because they don't want to be in the actual video. Yeah. And yeah. here's what I would suggest. It just even just like within the last two weeks, whenever Mother's Day was, I went to a local, we did a staycation and I went to a local resort and the resort had one of those lazy rivers that goes around mm -hmm. it. Right? right. So on day two, like I got very, I had a great time, by the way. I, I remember those posts. <laughs> I was like fun. a great time. It was a great time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as I'm going around the lazy river, I'm like, I, I want my phone. Like, you know, I can't even go on the lazy river without my phone. So I, I very bravely take my phone and I get into the, the little, you know, what do you call it? Tube, you know, and I'm floating down and I'm like holding onto my phone for dear life because it's not water resistant or whatever. You know? <laughs> You're brave. And here's where here's where I'm getting is that, you know, people with videos. I took 20 seconds of just floating down the river. And I put it on Pinky Nose Naples, my community page, and it took off. Like, it was crazy, the amount of interaction. People that didn't even like my page are interacting. It's getting shared, like, 15 times. And yeah. it's all because it's like a snapshot of what your life is like. So mm -hmm. you never know what's going to touch somebody, and you don't even have to be in it, you know? I mean, and that's where it's like, don't be scared to do video. Just take out your phone and start videoing something. I don't care if it's the horse that your kid's riding, you know, because it's after school equestrian class, you know, just take out the phone. Yeah, that's do a great tip. Right? Oh, that is, well, that reminds me of what Templeton did. Oh, yeah. We interviewed a guy here locally, and uh, he, his most viral video on Facebook uh, was when his wife talked him into letting her wax his chest. <laughs> Yeah. He said that thing took off like crazy. Well, she got some new thing in and he, she's like, hey, can I test this on your chest? And he goes, only if we Facebook live that stuff. And <laughs> sure enough, boom. Now, a local lender reached out to him from that video and said, hey, I love what you're doing. This is awesome. I got a pre-qualified buyer for you. And he goes, well, wow. It, okay. it, you know, when you talk about if the branding works, it's funny because you never you never realize. And it was like over the weekend I was out in the boat with my aunt and uncle. And my uncle has lived here his, since the 70s. So he knows everything. You know, he's a good old boy down here in Naples. And so I said, I said to him, I go, you know, Uncle Ben, I'm like, there's a, you know, there's a ice cream boat that's over at this island. I'd love to go and see this ice cream boat. And he's like, now, Sue, I've been here. I never saw such a thing. I said, yeah, it's an ice cream boat. So we go over there. The ice cream boat is actually called In the Pink. And I'm Facebook friends with her and, um, you know, I follow her page on Facebook. I've never met her in person, but we pull up and my aunt yells like, oh, we've got the pink lady on here. And the, the lady, you know, Julie, who's in charge of in the pink boat, she goes, Pinky Benson's on the boat. Like she knew, <laughs> what, you know, and then when I was like talking about in the pink, all these people thought that it was my boat. And I'm like, uh -huh. no, no, there's another pink lady. <laughs> yeah, no, that is awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I think I have, I, oh, I do want to ask this question. So a lot of people ask about how often should you post real estate versus just regular content when you use Facebook? Do you have a good rule of thumb? I mean, do you, do you try to balance, how do you balance that out? Or do you uh, just kind of go with it? When I first started on Facebook as a realtor, um, I had two different identities. It was like my Wonder Woman to my Diana Prince. Mm -hmm. um, and now pretty much Diana Prince is gone and I only have Wonder Woman. I don't know what that means, but you can just gather what you want from it. <laughs> um, and in the early, early ages of doing Facebook, um, I used to be very dedicated to doing what realtors do now, which is, you know, putting up their listings, putting up their listings. Um, I... I don't post as much because so many times like when it comes to real estate, so many times people like when I had that video out for the new listing, so many people tag me in it anyway. So I find, kind of feel it's redundant for me to just post it anyway. Um, now I'll post it on my business page. So I really think it's about knowing where your audience is. And like I said, for a long time, you're going to feel like you're talking to yourself, but they're watching, they're there, they'll come around and it's, and you just have to know your, your own personal algorithm almost, you know? So for me, um, 
I, you know, like it, it is kind of funny because when I go to do a pinky nose Naples, I kind of have to weigh it out and say, okay, am I going to go live from my individual page or am I going to go from, you know, my business page or my community page? So you kind of got to work around it and you have to be really aware of what you're posting, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's not when you go from being personal side of Facebook to being a business in Facebook, it's a total different mind shift. And, and I was talking with one of my friends about this and, you know, and he was saying, it's like, once, once you make that shift and you understand how it works, then all of a sudden you're more aware of everything that you're doing on social media world. You know, the people that just go on there because I'm a realtor and they told me I needed to post my listing on Facebook. It's not going to, it's not going to be like that for much longer. You're going to have to be more engaging than just, hi, I have a three bedroom, two bath to sell you. All right. No, that's great. That's Good great. Stuff. All right. So before we ask our uh, final questions, is there? Do you have a project you're working on now? A new video or something coming up? I I, I actually just went out and did a video this morning, and uh, I, I'm I'm going to try some transactional, transitional, 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 like um, where I go from being in my bathing suit to being in clothes. So. <laughs> We're going to see how this works. I'm hoping my 14-year-old daughter is going to help me with it. But if I can do this, then there may be a Wonder Woman video coming. If I can figure oh. out how to make this work, I may be Perfect able to Perfect timing, get right? It's coming out soon, too. Yeah, that's my favorite superhero, by the way. June 2nd, baby. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Cool. Hey, um, we normally finish off, and now this is with our, our in-studio in interviews, but we normally finish up. With you getting in the ring with the maniacs, is that cool? You ready for that? Uh, yeah, okay. You're gonna be. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be. No, okay. I just have some some kind of rapid fire questions that you can answer. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, okay. For for example, me? one. There we go. So, what's the best advice anyone's ever given you, Pinky? Um, the best advice I've ever gotten was probably from my father, which was never go to bed angry. How's that? Uh, I like That's that. a good one. I like that a lot. I need to tell that to my wife. No, I'm teasing, <laughs> teasing, only teasing. Hey, well, what's your favorite mobile app? And I kind of I have a feeling I know this one, but what would you say? Probably Facebook, Instagram. Right. Yeah. How about a book recommendation? Oh, a book recommendation. I have to go with Katie Lance right now. I'm reading Get Social Smart, which is amazing. Um, and then yep. if you know, there's other people out there that might be going through a situation like I have with grief, Option hmm. B by Sheryl Sandberg is a pretty good book as well. Okay. Okay. Be, okay. All right. Yeah, I know uh, Katie met her at, um, gosh, what event did I meet her at? Oh, the Social Media Marketing World event. Social Media Marketing there. World? Yeah. yeah so yep. she's got her new book out. Seth Price has his new book out, too, that I, I haven't purchased gotten that well. one yet. Uh, yeah, I, well, I got it on Kindle. I don't know how, I can't remember how much it was, but uh, it's great. It's great. Being a minimalist, I don't like to buy actual physical books that much anymore. So, um, gotcha. Anyway. Got it. Yeah, yeah. But it's great. It's the road to recognition. And it's right down your alley as far as that whole branding concept. Ah, uh, you'd, nice. You'd love That's it. A good as well. You'd love it. How about your favorite hobby? Oh, my favorite hobby. I am a big Disney fanatic. Um, I used to work at Disney World, so we have to go there every so often to get my Mickey on. So that would be like my little hobby on the side is I love little Disney stuff. Okay. Well, have you heard of Lou Mag Magellan? Magello? I can't remember his last name. You'll have to look up Walt Disney or WDW Radio. It's Walt Disney okay. World Radio. It, this was a, a presenter at uh, the Social Media World event, and he presented on how to grow your community using Facebook Live. He's won like nine times straight best travel podcast. All he does is, in, er, is do like Facebook Live and talk about uh, Walt Disney World. They live in oh. the Orlando area now. You'll have to check it out. I'll send you a link or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds <laughs> so, like fun. And let's finish up. One last question. How about this? Let's do something fun. Um, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Oh, my goodness. Where would I go? I would say probably Ireland. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of her heritage there, I guess, would yeah. be okay. ancestry in yeah. Ireland. And, um, you know, I think the green could be changed over to a little pink. I think they could handle it. <laughs> there you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that and my well, husband would probably love to try out all the pups. So, you know. <laughs> there we go. There we go. No, I love it. You, you're such a fun person to have on. Um, yes. It's been a great time. Yes. 
You're doing some awesome stuff out there. Hey, if agents that are listening, if anybody wants to reach out to you directly, how would they do that? You want to share your contact information? Or? Yes. Let me think about this. It would be Pinky Nose Naples on Facebook, which is my community page. You can find me under Sue Pinky Benson on Facebook. I'm always looking for new friends. No, no mean people though. I don't like mean people <laughs> and um, or negative Nellies. I don't want any of that. Um, and then of course on Instagram, it's Pinky Nose Naples. So, and you can find my website, PinkyNoseNaples.com. You see the theme there? There we go. There we well, go. And hopefully you don't well, mind that we don't mind that we we share uh, about, uh, you about you at a lot of our, a lot of our actual, actual uh, classes and things. Uh, classes so. and things. So. Oh, of course not. Please, by all means, and I'll share away as well. That's what the sharing is caring. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, thank you so much right, for being on. So I'll let you get back to your busy day. All right. And so we had Sue, so Pinky Benson, Pinky Knows, knows Naples, Naples, here on the Weekly Closer with the Real Estate the real Marketing Radio. Thanks so much. See you next time. See you next time. Thanks, Pinky. Thanks, Pinky.